Good morning, Calvary Chapel, Waco. There's Hannah. She says hi this morning. We're doing it live from the house today. Um, I was hoping to do it from the lake. I was at the lake, but it was a little too windy, and it was really nice, but it was real windy, and I didn't want to fight the wind and, and all that. But So here we are, um, the last Sunday of 2020. And man, what a year it's been. Um, I've been sitting at the house going through our Facebook for the last year, looking at our, all of our devotions, looking at all the places we went, did our devotions, and uh, just what we were saying. And, and I went back to the very first video after all this started when we were talking about um, raising toilet paper when we were going to the store realizing toilet paper was... <laughs> was non-existent on the shelves and so just our just our journey to get to this point has been um interesting to say the least very 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 interesting but it's been very exciting and, and it's been it's very it's been very sad because there have we have lost some people um to different diseases and sicknesses including the COVID-19 um I've done probably more funerals in the last six or seven months this year than I've done in any year since I've been pastoring. And one was COVID related. Um, the rest were um, the rest were just different things that people had passed on, and um, it's been tough because. The, the, the funerals have been limited. We had an uncle pass away just this weekend, and um, my uncle Gene, and um, man, you could we couldn't even go see him. I, 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 I mean, it's just been a it's been a weird year for all of us. But um, I'm so thankful for the Lord and in, in, in bringing us to this place. And just so you know. We didn't close the church today because there was an outbreak or people were sick or anything like that. We, we just did it. I, I just felt like with all that we've been doing the last few weeks that we have been blessed. We've been seeing so many people come to church and just get back to, to, to fellowshipping. But at the same time, I know people are still coming up positive. I know people are still getting sick and, and I don't want that. I don't want to see people get sick. I don't want to be the reason people get sick. And, um, I just want to be the reason that, uh, that people are, are doing good and feel safe and are healthy and, and do our part. Um, but it's just been, it's just been very, been a very difficult year, but at the same time, uh, we've seen our church rise up and we've seen our church come together, and and um, I just there was no outbreak this weekend, or we haven't had an outbreak. We've been very fortunate. Um, a friend of mine who pastors a church um, in another town, you know, it's not a big church; it's a 30, 40 people. But he had half his church get sick, or at least get positive. They, they're not all sick. He's he's a little sick, but. Um, as far as they go, I, I just didn't want that happen to us. That was my biggest concern. This whole journey is not putting our church at a risk because we're more faithful. We have more faith than everybody else. That's that's not my intention as a pastor or a leader to um, be that kind of guy. Um, reading some articles of pastors over the past year um, saying that this was judgment from the Lord. Um America was getting what they deserved. Um, I mean, I, I know that God uses these things to bring judgment, um, but he also uses these things, you know, to bring people to him. He, he uses these things to make us realize that this life is a risk anyways. And then and, and I was reading this morning that, that uh, your chances of dying in a car wreck are just as about as much as dying from the COVID and yet we all drive and we all, you know, don't think about that. And so, um, you know, I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to be wise. I'm just, I'm just trying to 
to, to walk in faith, to walk in strength, to be a good example to my kids, to, to be example to my family and friends. At the same time, uh, I live supernatural, and, and I believe in the supernatural, and, and I trust the supernatural. Um, but he's also given me wisdom, and, and so that's why we kind of canceled church this Sunday is, you know, I just, I just felt like it would be okay if we canceled in serve in house church service today, um, and pick it back up next Sunday. Um, I'm 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 thankful for all the Lord's doing, but but what I've learned through all this is that so many people, um, this has brought out a fear. This has brought out anxiety. This is a, this has brought out just a whole new way of looking at this life where. I mean, how many people go to nursing homes and can't get a visitor? How many people go to the hospital? I mean, we have friends in the hospital. And in the hospitals, they were already terrible places to have to go and, and spend time. But now to have to be alone and by yourself and can't go in? I mean, my father-in-law went to the hospital this past week. And thankfully, my kids were, we were out of town. But thankfully, my kids were here. And my daughter was able to go in and sit with him. But she couldn't trade out with nobody. If she left, he was on his own. And... That's crazy. That's just that's just crazy times. But that's the world that we live in, and that's the times that that we have to deal with. And and so going forward, um, I want to learn from the past. I want to learn from from what we did. And and so as I was going back through our Facebook page and uh, looking at all our devotions, all the places we went, um, it gave us new opportunities to do ministry. It gave us new opportunities. To, to be a, a, a church that's alive. It gave us new opportunities to, um, to, to minister. And, and, you know, we didn't know that we were going to be a food pantry church. We didn't know that we were going to be such an outreach church. I mean, although I'm an outreach pastor, man, God has just given us so many more opportunities than we could have ever had before. And we've watched... Um, even our church staff and that and CC and David have done a great job of stepping up and and being available and coming to work every day and, and just I mean they, they work a lot they do a lot and, and if you go back little CC she's she's becoming famous because she's she's more on Facebook live than I am it seems like and I think that's pretty cool but we saw we've seen her come out we've seen uh, God do great things in her and, and David of course David is just a wild man he's just done so much for the church running and going and I sent him to Mexico several times and um, he just goes and I'm very appreciative and so I, I think we have a good strong church and plus all of our volunteers um, that come in and help us do so much we are so thankful thankful that, that none of us have gotten sick. I mean, there's a few of us or a few of, in the body who have come up positive and they've gone and done their part and um, isolated, quarantined. Um, but thankfully, um, all of them have come back positive in a good way, come back healthy. And so I'm not downplaying those that have lost their lives at all because I know that that's, that's a terrible thing and I know some have lost their family in their family. But but man, God's called us to still live and to, to be wise. And so, you know, going forward, we just need to understand that, that the world has changed a lot. The world that we lived in um, has changed and is continuing to change. And there is a lot going on in the world, a lot going on behind the scenes, a lot going on in governments around the world, not just our government, but around the world that's going to impact all of us. It's going to affect all of us, the church included. What we got to remember is we have a life and a soul. And I know we're spirit as well, but, but, we, but, but many people, it seems, that are more concerned about their life than their soul. They're more worried and concerned about living than staying alive than living. And I, 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 I know that um, I know it's a real virus and I know it's a real pandemic, but we've had them before. We've had the flu. We've had sicknesses. We've had viruses. We've had these things before. And, um, 
and I know this one's deadly, and I know this one is is different than, than what we're used to in our lifetime, it seems like. But it seems like this is also an opportunity for governments of the world to use this pandemic to bring division among us, using this pandemic to separate us, to pull us apart, to keep us from, to, to put fear of coming in close contact with each other. And I, I know we're not the most um, stringent in our church on wearing masks and doing all those things, but, but here's, here's what I want to say going forward. We don't want to downplay taking care of ourselves. We don't want to downplay, you know, putting ourselves at risk. And that's why we say constantly, you know, if you're sick, if you're coughing, if you have if you have anything going on, you stay home. That's the best way to prevent this virus from spreading is for sick people to stay home. Now, I do know that there are people that are asymptomatic, that don't have no symptoms. And uh, I mean, but see, that's that's the invisible risk that, 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 that this life is. That's the part of this life. You can't not live because now if you find out you're sick positive you quarantine we just need to be wise all of us need to be wise but we can't be so scared that we don't live that we don't allow ourselves to exist because i assure you the fear of this virus is going to live in our generation going down we're, we're teaching our kids about this virus and it's going to carry them into the next generation and they're going to they're going to have certain fears going forward but what we have to do is we have to find our security and our trust in the Lord. So here's what I want to I want to talk about is when Jesus was with his disciples, he was honest with them. And when I say he was honest with them, he didn't tell them it was going to be the most wonderful thing in the world in the world to be a Christian. He did not tell us that it was going to be, you know, roses and cupcakes once we become a Christian. What he told us was that we could trust him in the midst of all the heartache and sadness. In Matthew chapter 10, this is what he says to his disciples. He says, behold, I send you out as sheep amidst wolves. He's telling us we're sheep in the midst of wolves. So we're going to be in a dangerous place. That's part of this life is that it's a risk. And, it, and, and we, that means we have to be on our guard. That means we have to trust the good shepherd to watch us. And so he says, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. One of the things that happens in places like North Korea, in China, in places like that, what they do is they use the people to turn in other people. They use incentives to give people that turn other people in bonuses. And so you get rewarded for turning people in. And so the Christians in the early days, if they were known to be Christians, there could be some Jewish people out there that go, hey, there's some Christians, and they could go and arrest them for that. I'm thinking as we go forward that we're going to see that as well going forward as the, as the government sees the opportunity to use the reality of this virus possibly, you know, to put more restrictions on us, to put more restrictions on the church, to put more restrictions on evangelism, to put more restrictions on the ability to help others. And we're not going to allow that to happen. We know that things are going to get tough. We know that, that the times are going to get worse. We're not here to break laws. We're not here to condemn people for even believing the government. We're not here to do any of that. All we're here to do is to make sure that each and every day we do our part. He says, I'm sending you out among the wolves. We have to continue to go out there. We have to continue to be in the world. We have to continue to do our part to take care of people. And the only way to do that is to get in the world, to be out there. He says, you'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak for it will be given to you in that hour. So we just know that as we go forward and we find ourselves in predicaments that we didn't necessarily hope to be in, we just trust the Lord. You just trust him. 
one of the toughest things that he wrote as he was also telling his disciples was this. He said, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. Now, he did come to bring peace between man and God. He did bring that peace. That's why he came is to bring peace back between man and God where it was lost in the garden. So he did bring that peace. But peace between people, that's not necessarily why he came. He says, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Now, we always know that the sword represents his word and truth. And so that's what they're going to reject. But he said this, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. We started feeling that just in this political arena. We just started seeing that in the last few years is this political governmental hot topic of Trump and this side and that side, man, we seen people hating each other. You've experienced this. Some of you've experienced got defriended by family members because of where you stood, because of where you aligned at. Now that's just political. I'm talking about Christian. There's going to come a time where it's not going to be because you're a supporter of this candidate or that candidate. It's going to be because you support Jesus Christ and you love him. That is coming. He said, and a man's enemy will be in his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me means you can't let the love for your kids keep you from being who you are as a Christian. That's good. That's tough. That is, that is tough. I, I would hate to be put in that position. I would hate to have that in my own family, but that happens, especially with strong religious, you know, say you're Muslim, you know, or even Jehovah's witnesses. If you become a Christian, you know, witnesses will cut you off. Um, but that's the world. He told us that. And he said this, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Think about that. Think about that. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And then he says this, he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's what he says. We'll find it. God didn't come to give us a happy life. God didn't come and die on a cross so that you and I could have the best life ever. That is not why he came. He came to set us free from the bondages of sin that was taking us to hell, separation from God. He came to set us free from that conviction and take it upon himself so that we could have access to heaven. It's inevitable. We're all going to die. It's inevitable that all of us are going to die. That's part of it. We just don't know how, when, how much life is a life. How many years do you need to call it a full life? How many years do you need to, to live as a husband and wife to call it a full life? I mean, 70 years, 80 years. What, what's a full life? What is a full life? Listen, a full life is when you participate in this life in the way that you were created to participate in it, not lusting after your own hungers, but lusting after what God lusts after. You know what he lusts after? He lusts after peace and love and, 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 and community and taking care of people, putting other people first. That's what he desires. That's what he hungers for. And that's how we are to live our lives. That's how we're to do it. But we got to know that it's not going to get better. It's not going to get easier. And it's not going to get nicer for us in this planet. It's going to get tough. But we must trust the word of God, his promises, what he tells us. We must trust him. And if we will trust him, he will guide us. One of the things in one of the videos at the very, in March, when this was first happening, 
and we were talking about um, raising toilet paper. Not food, not money. We didn't know any of that. We just we just were getting the toilet paper because that's what people were concerned about was the toilet paper. But I remember it, when I was watching that video earlier, in that video I said, we're going to trust the Lord to guide us step by step through this pandemic. And now, you know, what, six, seven months later, six months later, here we are, and God has brought us through that. Not only that, but our financial um, giving this year um, was up a little bit from last year. And to me, that that's not a sign of success. That's not what I look at to measure success. What I look at that is a measure of I'm going in the right direction, that he's providing for the steps that we're taking. We've had some good money come in from, you know, big chunks of money come in to help us do what we did. But still all the same, the Lord trusts us with that money. And I can't even tell you what an honor and a privilege it is for God to entrust us with each other, with all the people that's coming and with all the finances he's, he's given us so that we can continue to do uh, what it is we do as a church. And, um, man, I just look back and I go, you know what, as, as far as a church is concerned, we have prospered this year. 2020 has not hurt us other than the few loved ones that we lost in the course of a year, um, which is always a hard thing. But we've been very fortunate over the almost 20 years that we've been a church. We've, we've not lost. My mother-in-law was the first one we lost that was a member of our church, and that was, what, 2015, 2015 five years ago. And up until that point, um, we hadn't lost anybody, and we've been blessed to, 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 to travel this road, and we've lost my uncle, uh, Clifford Bell, who was one of our members, David Alanis, um, was one of our members a few years ago, and, and he lost his life, but but overall, God has, man, he's just led us through, and, and, and so for me as a pastor, I'm looking forward to 2021. I'm looking forward um, to what God is doing. You can sense around us that, that things are changing. You can sense around us that that the world is changing. Even my kids know the world is changing. Even, even my family's grabbing a hold of it. And um, But I will tell you this. Look, be as concerned about your soul as you are your life. For those of you that that, 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 are, or that have fear of this virus or anything and death, if you're good with the Lord, you're good. You don't have to worry. He's going to protect us. He's, he, he's with us. He's with us all the way. Listen, we're not alone in this. He's going to carry us through. He's going to continue to carry us through. I love my life as a pastor. Um, it's not easy. It's hard. And, and for those of you that went to church today and didn't get a notice, we apologize. We'll make sure next time we put a bigger banner out there and we, we, we get the word out there quicker. Or, I don't know. We'll figure some way out. But one way to do it is to click the notifications on our Facebook page. And so anytime that there's a message from us, it'll click on your deal and you'll, you'll see, uh, because we may not all have your phone numbers to text you and call you and tell you, but if you're on Facebook and you push that notification button, every time we do something, you'll be notified. It'll pop up on your phone and you'll say, oh, the church ain't happening today. So you'll know going forward. So going forward, as long as me, David, and Cece, the, the core group at church, as long as we can stay healthy, and um, we're going to continue to stay open and do our part. If for some reason one of us becomes positive, we will quarantine, we will pull back, and we will we will let this thing, you know, run its course. Uh, but we pr we do pray for all those that are sick, all those that are positive. We pray for 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 quick healing, um, that you be restored to your full strength prior to being sick, and we'll just trust the Lord with with that. Um, but going forward. You know, let's just, let's be more aware going forward. Let's be more focused going forward. Let's don't be so naive to think that the world's going to continue on the way it's always continued on. Let's don't be naive to think that 
uh, it's going to be happy-go-lucky in 2021. Let's not think like that. Let's be ready for war. Let's be ready for persecution. Let's be ready for what we know we've been told is coming. Recognize the dissensions in your family. Pray about that. Pray for peace and harmony among your family. Pray that they all become Christians and believe like you or follow the word of God. And, and if we'll do that, God will, his word will be a lamp unto our feet and he will get us through. We are so thankful for each and every one of you that are part of what we do. Um, we are so thankful and looking forward to the new year. And I'm uh, looking forward to next Sunday with you. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm tired of looking at myself and this phone and talking. I love you guys. Have a good, happy new year. We'll see you next year. God bless you.